motherfuckers out here acting like they're being forced to watch all Spencer Turley videos. <laughs> oh, shit cracks me up, dude. I know for a fact, if I didn't like somebody, I for damn sure wouldn't keep watching their videos over and over and over and commenting on their videos over and over and over. You do realize you're just making me more and more money, right? I mean, I'm just making sure you understand that because you're not hurting my feelings, you're not offending me, and you're not going to stop me from what I'm saying, so all you're really doing is putting more paper in my wallet, dog. Like, that's all you're doing. And by all means, voice your opinion, but I just find it to be quite comical whenever you'll have somebody watch one of your videos, and they'll be like, oh, fuck you, Spencer, and then they'll watch your next video, and they'll comment, you might as well just stop making these videos, man. And then they'll watch your next video and comment on that one. It's like, good God, dude. Do you realize how stupid you look? Do you guys not realize the only way to kill a YouTube channel is to stop watching it? Let them hate. Talk shit. Talk shit. What's up, my dude? So, let's talk about the positives of the game right, right here off the bat. Because I think a lot of people get the impression that I just hate this entire game. And, you know, I have, like, this agenda to try to completely shut down the game and fucking do all this crazy stuff. No, dude. It's called having an opinion on something and having thoughts about anything and just voicing that opinion. You can take it however you want to take it, man. Like, it's not, it's not like I'm over here saying that you need to think exactly like me or whatever. Like, have your own opinion, dude. Like, for real, you don't have to think like me. I'm just saying what I want to say, because that's my opinion on it. Like, people people get that so lost, because in this day and age, motherfuckers are too scared to voice their opinion anymore. So when someone does voice their opinion, oh shit, everyone freaks out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That That's just the way it is nowadays. The only people that's actually voicing their opinions out here is fucking Eight Thoughts and Angry Joe Show and H3H3 Productions. Like, <laughs> there's just a handful of people that do it, you know? Actually speak what the hell is going on, and they're not scared to do it, and they're not just, let me just stay happy about every situation and stay neutral so that I get more subs. A lot of people don't get how... Man, I would rather die real with zero subs than live fake with a million subs. Straight up. No questions asked. So, the official Monster Energy Supercross game, the pluses of it from what I can see so far, is obviously the graphics, right? They look good. They look probably the best of any motocross game so far. I, I mean, you know, how could you not say that? I mean, they look pretty good. They're, and I think part of that is... The fact that it, they've got everything like completely exactly replicated as far as visuals from the real life Monster Energy Supercross, uh, you know, in real life. So that's what gives it that sort of like, whoa, this looks crazy graphics. This looks like super realistic because it's not like they're they're trying to like make their own sort of version of the real life tracks. Like they're literally like scanning real life track stuff and then putting it on there so that's why it has that sort of realism effect to it now um whenever you talk about the actual replicas of the tracks themselves see that's where it starts getting all crazy because then it's like well what kind of scale do you have it do you have it one to one do you have it one to four what the fuck do you have going on because every game is different every motocross game is completely different right so that's where it starts getting kind of confusing because, I mean, you can have it realistic, perfectly one-to-one -one replica uh, from real life, but yet it might play like shit in a video game. You know, it just all depends on how the actual physics and the way the bike moves in the game and how, how you have to actually replicate things in that sense. Now, from some of the gameplay I've seen, and it's just gameplay I've seen, you know, what the hell does that mean? I haven't even played the fucking game, and I realize that. But that's just, you know, it's just me voicing my opinion before I've gotten the game. That, and that's, you should understand that. It's just me voicing my opinion before I've gotten the game. So, that's another topic for another video. But to me, it just looked like the way the jumps and stuff were, they were like so much more... Like, 
they were rolled off in a sense more so than I thought they would be. That's what it looked like for me. Like let's you know your main triples, um, like your bigger 75, 80 foot triples on a Supercross track. It was almost like in the gameplay I saw that the rider wasn't even like jumping up. He was more so jumping like forward like how you would on a motocross jump like a, a motocross standard tabletop or some shit like that <laughs> but like with supercross it has a certain element of just launching your ass to the moon and back you understand what i'm saying and i feel like that is a certain aspect that is somewhat lost within this new official monster energy supercross game at least from the tracks i've seen in the gameplay i've seen and it comes with the rhythm section jumps as well they all just look like they are not not as skill gapped you know what i mean it's it's like it's it's like it is a motocross game company trying to make a supercross game oh wait Oh, okay, now that makes a little more sense. <laughs> I mean, it just, it is what it is, right? They don't have a lot of experience with Supercross uh, making in games. Milestone has been known for MXGP, which has been pretty much all motocross. I know MXGP2 had the little stadium series, which is a little bit different than Supercross. But um, even then, like, y there is such a big difference between having rhythm sections where you're, like, hitting a very very standard double triple triple or maybe like a triple 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 at the maximum that's going to be what you're hitting in this new official monster energy supercross game like i highly doubt there is a single quad to hit in that game at all and most of the time i guarantee you when you hit when you're hitting like a rhythm section it's going to be like a double in it's not even going to be like a triple in right so whereas like if you go back to reflex you know nearly every single track has two or three sections where if you rail that corner fucking 100 percent perfect you're gonna launch it further than your average joe you're gonna hit like either a quad over two tabletops or you're gonna hit a um triple to a quad or you're gonna hit something crazy and what that does is it, it gives you that feeling of like you've actually accomplished being able to hit a bigger rhythm on a track and it you know it gets to the point where it's like are you trying to have a realistic simulator or are you trying to have a fun arcade game right so like with a simulator i can understand that you're trying to make it way more realistic and it would be fun on a simulator only hitting triple triple triples because that's pretty difficult on a simulator but when you talk about it in an arcade game if you don't have the fun factor of like big jumps and a skill gap of actually having bigger rhythms then it's gonna lose a little bit of that fun factor for a standard arcade game it's just gonna lose that in a sense um now, whenever it comes to the customization and all of that kind of stuff in the game, I think that's probably one of the best parts of the game because you're getting your official, like, you know, all of your stuff with the Monster Energy Kawasaki. I even saw some crazy-ass shit like a, not a chrome bike, but it was like almost like a bronze-style bike. Hell, there may be a chrome bike in the game, which I think that was kind of badass that um, in the customization, like, you can go in there and pick, like, special i'm pretty sure you can probably just color the fenders whatever fucking color you want to right it doesn't even have to be an actual team or anything like that like you could just go in there and have a, a damn purple yamaha or something like that i'm sure you could probably do that but um there is even like it even goes further than that from what i was seeing where you could have like some of the different special like, you know how sometimes they will have, like, a special version of a certain bike or, like, a yellow Yamaha or whatever the hell. You know, I'm thinking there's going to be a couple little special bike uh, graphics and stuff like that in the game, so that'll be cool. But um, the customization, it just, you know, you're really getting, like, a lot of your official stuff. Like, one, I'm sure probably 100% goggles is in there. All of your shit, like, um, th that you just don't normally see. I mean, there has definitely been a lot of that in the past, but, like, to have a game that's got it all in there that's console-based only, obviously, like I've said before, we get all that in PC Reflex and MX Simulator because it's all user-created stuff, so we have everything. Like, with MX Simulator, you can put... Let's just say you made some 
like very, very personal canvas gear. You like went in there and made your own design and it was like your own gear. So it's not out there to the public whatsoever. Well, you can put even that in MX Simulator Reflex. See, that's how crazy the the custom realm of the PC stuff is. Uh, you can put stuff that's not even to the public you know, you can make, hell, you could just make your own gear, right? You basically got a gear and bike graphic editor and track editor in both of those. You got an editor to every aspect of those games. That's what's so crazy about that. But if you're just talking like, you know, your normal stuff from 2017 and stuff like that, this is going to be one of the, you know, the first like console-based Supercross games. It's actually going to have like a lot of your different uh, brands of goggles, helmets, jerseys, boots, you know, bike graphics, and that whole kind of thing. And so that is cool about the game. I think it really comes down to what kind of motocross gamer are you? You know what I mean? That's at the end of the day, that's really what what is going to matter the most. Like if you're just a casual console gamer for motocross games, then this is probably your kind of game because this is going to be the only real way that you're going to experience a lot of this official tracks and official gear and official, you know, teams and that whole type of environment. This is the only way you can really experience that. So I understand that, you know, but if you're more of a hardcore style motocross gaming fan and you play on PC that's already got all this shit, it's not as important of a thing it's not as crazy of a thing but if you still want to buy the game and play it that's cool but i'm just saying i don't think it's really worth the 60 dollars if you're more of a hardcore gaming fan like i mean you can buy mx simulator with unlimited amount of content and an unlimited skill gap for like 30 or 40 bucks you know or you can buy the pc version of reflex for cheaper than that and it's got unlimited amount of tracks literally like you know you're comparing a game that's got 17 supercross tracks to a game that's got 5,000 tracks on it from supercross motocross trail tracks enduro cross you know straight rhythm square rhythm circle rhythm fucking you got everything under the sun in both of those games from custom tracks and things like that so um you know it just all comes down to are you a casual uh, kind of motocross fan or are you more of a hardcore motocross fan even though as a casual motocross fan i still think they're stiffing you a little bit with the 60 dollars for just supercross tracks i still stick behind that completely i mean I feel like it should at least have the AMA motocross tracks in there as well for that kind of price. That's just my opinion on that. Um, could you imagine if they had like Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game, and then they come out with the official AMA motocross track later on this year and both of them 60 bucks? Like, oh shit, dog. I don't think I can do that. If that if they do that, uh uh uh-uh. I'm not I'm not down for that. I wouldn't buy I would not buy the motocross game at that point. I would wait until they put them together, like straight up. That, that's just what I would do. Um, but yeah, man. So, I mean, you know, the overhypeness, it, it is what it is, right? Like they they made a business move to probably cost them quite a bit of money to get the official Monster Energy Supercross kind of thing back in them here. And it's going to pay off. That's one of those things that it don't even fucking matter what your game looks like or how it is. or It does not matter at all. That doesn't, that doesn't even matter, right? They just paid for that official name, and that's it. That's all that, that it really comes down to at the end of the day. And uh, at that point, you know, that that's what it is. And so it is what it is. Trust me, you get what you give, you know what I mean, Doug? So either way, I appreciate you watching all the videos. Later, dudes.